It's never too late to become an artist. On this episode of the Arts Page, you'll meet the talented artists at Hart Park Senior Center in Wauwatosa. We'll learn about the benefits of practicing art, the creative process behind making art, and how you can start the journey to become an artist. Meet this woman who began painting later in life and learn how her colorful artworks reunited her with her daughter after nearly 20 years. And come backstage at Milwaukee's first women-owned and operated theater company, Renaissance Theater Works, to learn about their mission and their production of The Wolves. The Arts Page starts now. Welcome to the Arts Page, I'm Sandy Max. Even if you have no formal training or intensive knowledge of art, you can start making art at any time. Don't believe me? Well, a perfect example of that is at Wauwatosa's Hart Park Senior Center. Local residents can learn art three times a week at the center. There's an oil and acrylic painting class, a watercolor painting class, and a mixed media class. These older artists come from different levels of creative experiences. Some of the attendees have been interested in art their whole life, but never pursued it until retirement. Some have practiced art for years and are very accomplished, but just want to be part of an encouraging and welcoming group. And some just decided on a whim to start making art and have learned a lot and grown a lot because of it. Now let's meet the talented artists from the Hart Park Senior Center. Yeah, that'll work. This place, what we do here, is an opportunity to create your second family. It's important to socialize mm -hmm. with peers. Just meeting people and networking with people, that's the, that's the best thing. Friendship, that's not something I thought would be coming out of it. We've all um, gained friendships from these art classes. This is a socialization thing more than anything else. And it's just a good way of like slowing down your world and just getting behind your, your canvas and, and painting. It keeps my sanity. <laughs> It, it, it does. I've learned from the people here. They've got such great ideas. Some people are brand new. You know, they had another career and they're starting to paint now. And they're, they have talent. Um, you know, I'm amazed by the talent that our seniors have. This has been just a wonderful opportunity for me. I've learned so much from Nancy. She's excellent. Giving them opportunities to see themselves different and to see themselves as an artist. When you frame a piece and you hang it someplace, it changes how you see yourself. Well, I've grown over the 10 years. People appreciate my art, uh, and that makes it more enjoyable. My whole view of the world has changed as I drive around or go places. We all bring a photograph, and we paint by the photograph, but rarely does it look like the photograph because we put our feelings and our emotions and our perspective into that painting. I think if I wasn't taking the class, I wouldn't be doing art. What would you say is your teaching philosophy? Um, to allow the person to become themselves. I don't want you drawing like me. I don't want you painting like me. I want you to find where your niche is. And also, even when you have a certain style or a certain niche, to expand that niche. Go bigger, go smaller. You know, we buy a pad of paper five by 12 or whatever size it is, 12 by nine, and we just paint only that size instead of looking at the piece of uh, artwork or the image and seeing different possibilities of how you can change it and move it in different directions. So I really encourage that kind of thing. Well, I was at Habitat for Humanity's Restore and I loved the um, pile of screwdrivers that were there. And I loved the orange against the blue, the complementary colors. So I thought that that would make a good painting. I kept going back to this pile of screwdrivers at the Habitat for Humanity and trying to arrange them in different um, combinations. I think they were probably really wondering what I was doing there. <laughs> and then I eventually bought all these screwdrivers and brought them home and tried to come up with a, comp a complementary kind of composition. This actually was pretty successful. It got into Watercolor Wisconsin, and it's actually up on their website right now. What helps me is I don't have a perfectionist bone in my body, so I can take classes and just have fun with it and be creative and, and not worry about it and just enjoy what I'm doing and not compare myself to anybody else. This one, Nancy had us take two different, I thought this was fun to do, two different uh, pictures 
and somehow bring them together into a painting. When you start thinking, well, how am I going to take part of this picture and part of this picture and put it into a composition, it, it's a little mind-boggling, but I had fun with that one. It's called Celebrating Summer. My sister Jane and Sue was in this class, and I and my wife were at this restaurant in Waukesha, and uh, it was just so vibrant. And, you know, there aren't many good summer days in Wisconsin. <laughs> and so you're out there, you appreciate it. Yeah. A lot of people have been here a long time, so there's a friendship that's developed. And it's nice because we are comfortable enough with looking at each other's work, uh, doing a little critiquing, helping each other. It's amazing what you think is good. Somebody else looks at it and points out something that you didn't see. What was it about this one single leaf in your backyard that made you want to paint it? The various colors, I think. There was a little green left and brown, and then I outlined it. But I really just thought it would be good in all the edges that were there, showing the end of the season. It was in an exhibition with other people from this class at the Wauwatosa Library, and I won second place. It was quite a surprise, and um, I titled it Finale, and when the, the announcer said Finale, I said to the woman sitting next to me, someone took my name, <laughs> and then they said my name, and I just started laughing. I, I truly could not believe it. Yeah, I've really always been an art lover, and as an undergrad, I did a, a lot of and uh, did a lot of fine arts things. Most of my painting uh, is uh, done uh, with photos that I've taken in my travels. So this was actually in the Piazza Navona in Rome. It was also one of my most challenging paintings I've done. What benefits, what rewards do you get out of uh, these art classes? It's real good for my mind, uh, the opportunity to be creative. I'm a curious person. So this is something that helps me with my curiosity. I'm always looking for new things and new ways to do things. I very much like Costa, who runs this place. Um, one of our main goals here for myself and our, our staff is to be around and be available for our seniors to chat with, listen to, um, and just you know, be a, a, an ear. Um, I have a master's degree in counseling and I never thought I'd use it here, but. I'm finding out that I'm using it on a daily basis because people just want to be able to be heard. Why is uh, offering these art classes important? I, it keeps, I think it keeps them engaged. You know, it gets you um, in a place that's happy and peaceful. You know, it's just, I think, a very, really therapeutic practice. How does, uh, how does someone go about signing up to become a member? Um, you can come down to the Hart Park Senior Center and just come on and, and fill out an application. It's a membership form. That fee for a, a resident is, $20, is $15 for the entire year. A non-resident uh, rate is, is $20, and that's good for the entire year, and that gets you, you know, access to our center, gets you your, our monthly newsletter sent to your house, and it gives you a, a break on our classes that are offered. You made this from watching YouTube? Yes. Wow. So my very first painting that when my family came home, they were like, you painted that? It's uh, unbelievable. The um, amount of options on YouTube, different teachers teaching different styles of painting, you know, soft and loose or very tight. I am uh, self-taught, except for, you know, classes and a, a lot of YouTube. The biggest thing of learning to, do, to be an artist is to observe what you're looking at, because when my friends looked at this for the first time, they said, well, how did you know to do that? And I said, it's just observing what you see, just looking at it, it all the lines and the colors, and it, it just seemed like a challenge. And I just liked the picture, so I decided to try to paint it. But then one night I, at home, I just decided to do the beak, and it turned out, and I said, oh my. <laughs> it looks photorealistic. It's very good. Yeah, I, I surprised myself on that one. Tell me what what is this? Okay, well, it, it's a still life. It's just some some things that were on the on my actually on my counter in the kitchen. Um, this, is there, a ki this is a kitchen counter. Yeah, it's a kitchen counter. There was a blue cup, 
and some other stuff and the faucet and it it just sort of went i guess it was just a fun thing to do when you look at a just an ordinary thing like a kitchen counter you see this you see yeah. art in it yeah you see the beauty in it yeah it's all there all you have to do is look and see there's beauty in everything yes there's beauty in everything even even the ordinary or and yeah i mean uh, uh, the ordinary is is not ordinary mm -hmm. the ordinary when you look at it and you compartmentalize it sometimes say there within that whatever there is something that is just fantastically beautiful my dad was in his 90s and his great um, grapevines had sort of fallen apart and weren't bearing anymore and so he asked if I could do something to resurrect them so I took the entire thing down and tangled all the vines built new new um, grapevines that first year they prospered and so he'd ask if I would go down and take a picture of them so I'd take photographs and bring them up and show them to him and so that was um, a, actually a painting from my dad we had a show here at uh, Wauwatosa. It was the Hart Park that had their senior center show. This one won um, Best of the Show. And then it was just in a, a painting, uh, in, in a show in Waukesha, and it took second place in Waukesha. So it's, it's always nice, even if you don't win anything, but if you go to a show and you hear people commenting on your paintings, um, it's a, it always gives you a good feeling. So you take the, the brush, and you put a little paint on the side of it. Our saying in class is paint, look more, paint less. What do you want them to see when they're looking more? There's a lot of things to look at. They have to see the shape, they have to see the value, what's dark and light, and they have to see where the light source is coming from. Do it. And I always try to encourage them and say, you're gonna get better, because the more you paint, the better you will get. The Hart Park Senior Center is located in Wauwatosa at 7300 West Chestnut Street, right behind the athletic field. Learn more at tosarec.com. What makes Renaissance Theater Works unique? They're Milwaukee's first women-owned and operated theater company. Founded in 1993, they produce high-quality theater for everyone to enjoy, while remaining committed to actively promoting the careers of women on stage and off. On stage now at Renaissance Theater Works is The Wolves. It's a coming of age story about a high school girls soccer team. The Wolves is a Pulitzer Prize finalist for drama and is being directed by a veteran Milwaukee actor. We go now behind the scenes at The Wolves. We started Renaissance to provide more opportunities for women in theater. At that time, um, in 1993, only 12% of the plays in the United States were written by women. I started Renaissance with four other women, uh, Michelle Treband, Raylene McMillian, Marie Kohler, and Jennifer Rupp. Our mission was always, first and foremost, to produce the best theater that we were capable of and to look for plays that had roles for women that went beyond the grandma and the, and the ingenue. I mean, we went from having all of the meetings in my kitchen. We now have a dedicated staff that, of amazing young women, and we produce, I think, the best work in Milwaukee. Go ahead, I'm going to go to the wall and back. I think that the Wolves is more than just about soccer. It talks about things that not necessarily are ignored, but things that are kind of put off to the side when it comes to talking about adolescence and growing up. How'd you hear that? What? About the scout? Uh, I don't know, guess coach told me? What I really appreciate about it is that it's a play, a piece of media that depicts teenage girls, you know, turning into young women um, in a way that's not um, stereotypical. It's about, you know, being, what is it actually like to be a teenager? But it's like, he's old. He murdered thousands of people. Literally hundreds of thousands. It was written by women, for women, it's directed by women, played by women, all of these things that I think is so rare. I feel very grateful to be a part of a process like this that is depicting women the way that we want to be seen. We are 
The Wolves uh, by Sarah DeLapp uh, centers around a high school girls club soccer team. Uh, over the period of six weeks, every scene takes place as these girls are warming up for a game that they're about to play. We never see the game, the soccer game that they play itself, but we see the moments before as they warm up. And the way they warm up is like soldiers, each week preparing for a unique kind of battle on the field. It looks like they're preparing for war. One of the big parts of my vision is that uh, we're casting it age appropriately. So oftentimes you see this play uh, with actors who have just graduated college, maybe are in their 20s, um, still look really young, uh, but are adults. They definitely have Skype in Cambodia. The internet isn't the internet everywhere, you guys. I've been to Cambodia. We're producing it with First Stage's Young Company, and then you'll say, he's old. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let's go. I adore Lee Settlement. What you're doing is super cute. I knew we needed someone dynamic and innovative and that would be really excited about the project. And she also has a longstanding relationship at First Stage. She's a teacher and a mentor for these girls already. The bond that she has with um, the girls in the play is astonishing. You know, when there's intensity to that is great. I've known these girls very well um, and for a long time. I have a, the great privilege of being on core faculty at uh, the First Stage Young Company. It's really awesome to be able to take the work that we're doing in class and see it in practice on a professional stage. I think one of the things I love about Elise as a teacher and as a director um, is how much she listens to the actor. She doesn't approach you as an actor and say, this is the way I want it to be, and you have to do this, and you have to listen directly to what I say. She's willing to collaborate on a just wonderful high level. She's fantastic. There's not a lot of spaces where you can go into um, n like knowing the director. That's not always the case. I could use more. We should oh, totally no. not. We should not take our liberties okay. for granted. We should definitely not take our liberties for granted. So I feel very lucky in that sense to have her know me as an actor, as a student, as uh, a colleague now. It is so much fun to be able to be in a space that we both feel comfortable in and we are able to like help each other realize this vision. There isn't another play like this. It's incredible. It's a theater experience that you just don't get to see. And I, I am thrilled to be able to bring it to Milwaukee audiences. You can see the Renaissance Theater Works production of The Wolves now through February 11th. Next, we meet Marilyn Shaker, an artist in Ohio who was a stay-at-home mom who then started her creative journey drawn to the world of flowers. She leaned all the way into learning from floral design to oil painting, not always being the star student in class. What is particularly special about Shaker's story is how her art reunited her with her daughter after nearly two decades. Painting has transformed her life, and it's now a family affair. I had zero talent. I mean, I was not somebody, even in school or in grade school, the kids, they could all draw, not me. I was like always kind of, you know, and I never even thought about it. I just accepted the fact that I didn't draw or paint well and so forth. My, my mom grew up in that era too, where I think she was just 10 years earlier than she would like to have been as far as women being out of the home. She, she never 
complained and it wasn't like she didn't choose to be a stay at home mom. But I sensed that for us because she had four girls. So she really encouraged us all to, you know, to be what we wanted to be. Then all of a sudden I had a little desire, like I really want to do something more creative. So first of all, I went to floral design school with Bill Hickson and took classes and so forth. And then I was hired at Higby's and I was their floral designer plus their custom uh, customer arranger. Bill Hickson, who she trained under, he's quite renowned. He did the White House. I started out, I took some classes at Tri-C. The one school that I was the most encouraged and I want to say almost to the point that I kind of grew was they had a, uh, an art school and it was the Lighthouse School of Art and this was in Jupiter, Florida. So I started out worst of the class and when I ended up and graduated from the class I took best of the class. So I don't say that boastfully but just to say there's always hope. The beauty of what God created in the flowers and the colors, just uh, the magic. When you think of flowers, if you start to think of the hundreds of different kinds of flowers, you know, from purple, orange, uh, red, yellow, blue, green, whatever, there's no limit to what God created. It's funny because I'll be going through my mom's work and then I'll find something totally unexpected like those portraits. My mom had a spare bedroom upstairs that probably had 200 paintings in it. You couldn't even walk in the room, literally. There were paintings that were tilted up against each other so they wouldn't get bent. And I said, you know, if, if mom's really going to move, we're going to have to organize these paintings. So I went over there one day and moved all the paintings to the basement and organized them by size. And once Pam saw that, I think that ignited her like, oh. My mom and I had some personal issues. I still had a relationship with my, my father and my siblings, but it was a sensitive topic. So we didn't, with my siblings, I didn't really talk about my mom because I didn't want to engage them in my issues. My family was not the Brady Bunch. I wasn't, you know, Miss Cookies and Dough, and my husband didn't come home. And, you know, we were what I would call normal, uh, just average people. You know, I have a son who has a business and the daughters. And, you know, everyone is so unique. And the issue that I had with Pam was 100% my fault and just the fact that she has come back into my life and she has been so kind and receptive and loving. It's a gift from God. Anybody who has a relationship that isn't working, there's always time to make amends and that's what Pam did. I, I truly just wanted sincerity and then let's just move on because you know relationships take two people. Pam really is the one that's marketing it. I'm just helping her organize it, getting painting signed, but she's, I call her the, the chief marketing officer. I asked her if she could paint this mountain scene for me. I had a picture I'd given her and the painting came back very different than the photo because she saw all of these colors in it that I didn't see. I have done a couple smaller shows. They've been indoor, so it wasn't the big tent thing, but it's been fun because it's been the creative side of me. So I have submitted applications for the Boston Mills Brandywine show. I haven't heard yet. So I'm, I'm hoping to have my mom's work get accepted in that show. She said that that's always been her 
ultimate dream to have her work accepted in that show? I definitely have slowed down, but I'm finally getting back uh, the interest and the desire. I'm kind of painting what I want, but I would like it to be enjoyed. So I would like people to like it, but that's not my first goal. My first goal is what I want, and then hoping that it's liked. Unfortunately, Marilyn did not get accepted to the 2023 Boston Mills Brandywine Art Show, but she says she'll keep trying and apply again this year. We all wish her luck. Thank you for watching the Arts Page. I'm Sandy Max. Please follow Milwaukee PBS on our social media pages for more stories of creativity in our community.